Okay. Here we go. This is uh, Timothy Priscilla again working some word problems using the first derivative test of my <coughs> Math 1325 class. Here's the problem. The company found that new employees prefer training sessions of moderate length. Shorter training sessions provided too little instruction to complete a task, while longer training sessions contain too much instruction to remember. For a training session on a particular task, the company determined that the ratings new employees gave for the training session could be approximated by R of T equals 32T divided by T squared plus 256 where T is the length of the training session in minutes. They want us to find the uh, training session length that received the highest rating. So we're hoping we find a maximum here. That's what we're looking for. So that's what we're, we're thinking there should be a maximum. I think I'm going to, uh, if it's okay with y'all, I'm going to just re uh, rewrite the problem here. And while I'm recopying it, y'all tell me, what do you think? We're going to have to find the derivative, so what do you think we'll use to find this derivative? Which derivative rule will we use? The quotient rule, okay, if we're using the quotient rule, we need to know the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of the numerator? Thir just 32, I agree. The derivative of the denominator? Just a 2t. So, finding the derivative, r prime at t, r prime at t, I'll draw my fraction bar, it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, the original denominator, which is t squared plus 256 sine minus the derivative of the denominator times what? Okay, the 32t all over okay, t squared plus 256 quantity squared. Hey, can I cancel a uh, t squared plus 256? No, you cannot. That numerator is not in factored form. You cannot cancel. If you use the quotient rule and start canceling right off, what does that mean? You're doing something wrong. Okay, so distributing the 32 over the t squared plus 256, we're going to get 32 t squared plus uh, let's see what did he say 8,000 I agree 8,192 and here we get a minus 64 T square and we can combine the T square terms 32 uh, 32t squared minus uh, 64t squared. I think I'll write it like this. t squared plus 256 quantity squared. Then we have an 8192, 8192 minus 32t squared minus 64t squared. That gives us the minus 32t squared for my derivative. Now we have to find our critical numbers. That means we need to know when is the derivative equal to zero, when is it undefined. And uh, here's something, first of all, let me write out. When is r prime equal to zero? Set the derivative equal to zero. Set the derivative equal to zero. The first thing I would do is I would multiply both sides by that denominator. When I do that, 
what am I going to be left with on the right hand side? If I multiply both sides by that denominator, all I'm going to be left with is that numerator, okay? 8192 minus 32t squared. What have we got on the right side? No, it's zero times the denominator, which is zero. If you multiply, if you have a fraction set equal to zero, this is one of those things, if you don't get anything else out of this class, I want you to get this idea, uh, uh, take this with you when you're through with this class. If you have a fraction and you set it equal to zero, you can multiply both sides by that denominator and all you're left with is the numerator. A fraction equals zero when the numerator is equal to zero. The value of the denominator doesn't matter. When, if you, if I, from here on in, if I have a fraction and I want to know when does it equal zero, I'm just going to ignore the denominator and set the numerator equal to zero. A fraction equals zero when the numerator is equal to zero. And we can move the 32t squared over. And I divide both sides by the 32 to give us t squared is equal to, is that a 256? That's where the 8192 came from, 32 times 256. So don't be impressed that I could do that in my head. It was just logic. And I, I was setting this up to use the square root method. When you use the square root method, we get two possible t values. We get, normally, if you're using the square root method, you drop the square on the left and you pick up that plus minus square root on the right. The square root of 256 is 16. So you're getting two possible t values, but remember, t is time in minutes. t is time <coughs> in minutes. t is the length of the training session in minutes. Could they have a negative 16 minute training session? So if you're one of those people that always forgets the plus minus, then you'd come out okay. We didn't need it anyway. The only t value we had, the only critical number we had, is a positive 16. The negative possibility is unacceptable. You can't have a training session that is negative 16 minutes long. So if I had to guess, that's the only critical number. If there's going to be a maximum, then it has to occur there at uh, 16. So let's see if we're right. Let's show that 16 is a maximum. This we're looking at the sine of r prime. Oh, and I sort of jumped the gun. We have a fraction here, and we have to ask ourselves: uh, Is the fraction ever undefined? I jumped the gun and just went straight to the number line because I know what's going to happen. I should have mentioned this though: a fraction equals zero when the numerator is zero. That's where we got the sixteen. A fraction is undefined when the denominator is zero. Will that denominator ever be zero? T squared plus 256 all squared. That's never going to be zero. The smallest that denominator can be inside those parentheses is 256. So this fraction is never undefined. The only critical number we have is that positive 16. Any questions there? Maybe I should write that out for you. When is R prime undefined? When the denominator T squared plus 256 quantity squared equals zero. And that denominator is never equal to zero. It never equals to zero. Where is it undefined? R prime is never undefined. I don't like saying that. That's two, what is it? Two double, it's a double negative. Never undefined. So R prime is always defined. I like saying it like that better.
We're getting back to our uh, number line. What's the smallest number I could test to the left of 16? Zero. I could test zero, and that's an easy number to plug in. So that's what I'm going to test. Testing zero. I'll say test zero. We have r prime equals, where's the derivative? I'm better. I'm going to lose the derivative. There it is, right there. Plugging in zero. Here's the derivative. I'm having trouble seeing it. There's the derivative. We have an 8,192 minus 0, so that's just an 8,192. What's this sign on this derivative always going to be? Realize it's quantity squared. It's always going to be positive. Positive divided by positive, that's positive, so increasing. And to the right of 16, what do y'all want to test? 20 testing 20 first of all do the denominator we know the sign of the denominator the denominator is always going to be positive and when you plug in that 20 you're going to have an 81 uh, 8192 minus 32 times 400 which is a negative 4608. So what sign is the derivative to the right of 16? To the right of 16, it's negative, so decreasing. So, they want to know, let's go back to the original question. The training session length that received the highest rating is how many minutes? Where was our maximum at? 16, 16 minutes. This is obviously not something that's uh, uh, very advanced that they're being trained for. It's something that's they're not going to work for old general dynamics or Boeing and designing aircraft, so this is their training session obviously for just 16 minutes. Any questions there?